Hi guys, my name is Ollie. I'm a junior doctor based in the UK and today's video is all about applying for your first jobs as a junior doctor. How does the process work? I know that there's a load of you going into final year or doing your fourth year exams and going into final year of med school in the UK and you've got job applications just around the corner. So this video is basically to give you an overview of all the different options available and how the program actually works. But before we jump into things, I just need to remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and make sure that you hit the little bell to enable notifications to make sure that you don't miss any more videos in this series. So just to jump straight into the most common question that I get on this subject from younger medical students is, it's time to apply for a job, what do I do? Well, thankfully for most people, it's quite simple. Basically what will happen is when it comes time to apply for the jobs and your medical school will tell you when the time is right to apply for your jobs, you will make an account on something called Oriel. Now, Oriel is a portal, essentially. It is a website through which all of the job applications for junior doctors in the UK are made. It's exactly the same as UCAS. When you applied for medical school, everyone in the country also applied for medical school using this centralized portal which held all of your information and tracked your choices. And Oriel is exactly the same thing, it's just UCAS for doctors. And it is through Oriel that all of your information will be sent not to UCAS or to universities, but to the foundation schools, which raises the question, what is a foundation school? Basically speaking, the UK is split up into geographical areas with prescribed sets of boundaries, which are called foundation schools, or sometimes you'll hear the word deaneries. These are the same thing. They are simply collections of NHS trusts within all these different areas in which junior doctors, that is FY1s and FY2s, foundation year one and twos, can be trained. This is where the jobs for training them are available. Some of these areas are very big, some of them are very small, and all of them contain different jobs and different numbers of jobs. For example, London is split into multiple foundation schools or deaneries, because of the population density and the number of hospitals there. Whereas you have very large deaneries like the Northern Deanery, which covers virtually all of the Northeast, including Newcastle, Tyneside and Cumbria. And essentially you will apply to one of these foundation schools and that is where you will stay rotating between some of the different trusts in the area potentially or different hospitals throughout your foundation year one and your foundation year two the course of your foundation training. So coming back to the process of applying for our first jobs as a junior doctor, what do you actually need to do? Well, here we go. You will create your Oriel account when prompted to by your medical school and everyone else in your year will be doing it at the same time. It's impossible to miss this happening. You need to input all of the personal details that it asks of you, which will be your name, address, contact information and so on. And at this point, you will be asked to nominate a referee for your job application. Now, unlike with UCAS, you'll remember where you had to ask for a full academic reference where someone was talking about your suitability for medical school and talking about how great you are. It's much less than that this time around. It is simply a very short tick box exercise where this person has to say, yep, Ollie is fit to graduate from medical school and I think he'll be a good doctor. And usually this is simply gonna be your personal tutor or your supervisor or someone from your medical school. And it's at this point when we can start to consider the EPM, the Educational Performance Measure, which correlates to something called your decile, which is I'm sure something that many of you will have heard of. The easiest way to conceptualize this if you're not sure what exactly it means or how it's calculated is it is a number that measures your educational and academic achievements and performance. There are 50 points available in total for your EPM, and this is the way that it works. You get 34 points for free, simply by going through medical school, doing everything you're supposed to do, and passing all your exams. You get 34 for free. Now, deciles, you get an additional nine points potentially, in addition to the 34 you already have for performing very well in medical school. And the way it works is this, is if you imagine your cohort, that is all of the people in your year at medical school, the top 10% of those that perform very well on the exams 
will form the first decile, the highest achievers on the course, the 10% of your year that has the highest exam scores, both clinically and academically. They are the top decile and they will get maximum points, so they will get nine points on top of the 34 they already have. The next 10% below them, so the people who weren't quite at the top, but were very close to the top, will get eight points. Then the 10% below them, the third decile, will get seven points, and this carries on all the way down until you get to the bottom 10% of the year, that is, the 10% of the year that has on paper, remember, this isn't a reflection of clinical ability in the real world or whatever, this is just how they performed on exam day. Using whatever metrics your university chooses to use, the people in the bottom 10% will receive zero additional points and they will get the basic 34. So this would in theory take us to 43 out of 50 total points for the EPM, the Educational Performance Measure. We then have five points available for previous degrees. So this can either be a degree that you did before medical school, such as I did a Bachelor's of Science, or it may be a degree that you've intercalated during your medical studies. So you may have done a bachelor's degree, a BA or a BSc, or you may have done a master's degree later in the course. So the way it works is a bachelor's degree at 2-1 standard is worth three points out of five, a master's degree or a first class bachelor's degree is worth four points out of five, and then a PhD, a doctoral qualification, is worth five points out of five. Obviously the number of people with PhDs graduating from medical school is gonna be fairly low, but there might be one or two in your year, and so having that PhD will score you a maximum five out of five. Which brings us to 48 out of 50 in our running total. The remaining two points are available for PubMed indexed publications. That is specifically a PubMed indexed publication. This is a research article or a paper that we're talking about here in which your name appears on the author line when it is opened for the first time. So be aware that this means that collaborative publications in which you are listed as part of a group, for example, or you are listed within the paper in one of the appendices as a collaborator does not count for the purposes of your foundation program application. Your name has to be on the author line and that is the only thing that matters as well as the fact that the article is PubMed indexed. So one point available for each up to a maximum of two, which takes us to 50 out of 50. There is another 50 to think about, but we'll park that to one side for now because now is the time to actually rank our deaneries. And this is the thing that most people have heard of. All of the 25 foundation schools are presented to us in a list on Oriel, and we have to rank them from top to bottom, basically in the order in which we might like to be sent to each of them. And the way this works is we simply drag and drop all of the available 25 foundation schools into the order that we would like with our most favorite at the top and our least favorite at the bottom. So if you're dead set on going to London, you might rank Northwest London at the top the other London deaneries slightly lower down and then somewhere like Wales or Yorkshire or somewhere at the bottom. As long as you've ranked all 25 deaneries in some sort of order, you've satisfied all the rules and it doesn't matter. Now remember, at this stage, we are not ranking the particular rotations or jobs that we want as junior doctors. We're not even ranking the hospitals that we're gonna be based at. We are simply ranking the broad scope geographic areas that we might want to be placed in. All of that other stuff, jobs, rotations, all the rest of it, doesn't happen for months. So once we've done that, we simply have to tick a few boxes and declare our fitness to practice, and that's it. That is our foundation application. Then a few months down the line, we will all sit the SJT, the Situational Judgment Test, and this is where the remaining 50 points for our application come from to give us a total score out of 100. Now, most people that are at medical school in the UK will have taken the UCAT, which has its own situational judgment test, and it's not that dissimilar in terms of the qualities that it's trying to test. The questions are just a lot harder. So once we've done that and we've got an adjusted score out of 50 for our SJT performance, that is added to our EPM, that previous score out of 50, to give us a total score out of 100, and it is this score that is used to rank us against 
every other person in the UK applying for their F1 jobs. It's that score that will be used to allocate us to the deaneries, the foundation school that we applied to. So the person with the highest total score gets their top choice of deanery. The next person with the second highest score gets their top choice of deanery as long as a place is available in the deanery and it wasn't taken by the person before them. And this goes all the way down the thousands and thousands of medical students that are applying to be junior doctors until everyone is allocated. Then usually in March or April of the following year, so you guys this year who are applying for jobs in August and September 2021, when it rolls around to February, March, April of 2022, it is at this point that you will find out which deanery you've been allocated to. And at that point, you can start to think about ranking individual jobs, that is collections of rotations, six jobs over two years. And your same total score, your EPM plus your SJT, is used exactly the same way to allocate people to the jobs. So all of you in the Northern Deanery, the person with the top total score in the Northern Deanery will get their top choice of rotations. The next person will get their top choice of rotations and so on until everyone has a job. And that's basically it for applying for the foundation program. That's as much as you have to do. There are some other options available and I'll talk about them now, although they really deserve their own videos. So we'll think about that in the future. So the other options available to you as an incoming junior doctor, the first of which is the Academic Foundation Programme, or as of 2021, now known as the Specialised Foundation Programme, or SFP. These are entry-level academic positions, and they are intended to allow you to spend some protected time developing yourself in one of three domains, which is usually going to be research, most commonly, uh, education and teaching or medical education research and medical leadership and simply speaking the way this usually works is that one of your four month rotations that you would normally do in f1 or f2 is lost and is now a dedicated academic or specialized post it may or may not be tied to a particular specialty but usually there's a lot of flexibility in what you can do with these posts as long as your supervisor is happy i'm going to talk a lot more about this in future videos we're going to do a dedicated series because this is the type of junior doctor that i am but just some broad principles these positions are often very competitive you apply for them using a portfolio which is usually more about things like conference presentations, research that you've done, prizes that you've won and so on. And there is a rigorous interview process for these jobs as well. Unlike the standard foundation program for which there is no interview and it doesn't really care about your portfolio other than those two potential papers. And the other thing to know is that you can only apply to two academic units of application. So you may decide to apply for academic jobs in the Northern Deanery and in London, for example. You can only apply for jobs in the two that you choose and none elsewhere. So do your background reading, do your homework, make sure you're familiar with the types of jobs that are available under the SFP in the different deaneries. Secondly, the other pathway you might choose is something called the Foundation Priority Programme. Now this is a programme intended to recruit medical students who are becoming junior doctors to either geographic areas of the country that are underserved and don't have enough doctors or in particular specialties that are underserved and don't have enough doctors. Classically, this is things like general practice and psychiatry, although many others are available. And similarly to the academic or specialized foundation program, they are often themed in a particular area. This might be research, statistics, leadership, and so on. And often these posts will come with incentives in order to encourage people to apply for these posts. That might be things like funded qualifications Qualifications, like a postgraduate certificate in leadership or in education, which amounts to several thousand pounds worth of funding for that qualification, or it might simply come with an advanced pay package of maybe five to seven thousand pounds extra per year on top of your normal foundation doctor salary. So be sure to look at those as well because there are some great posts available. And finally, the other pathway that you might consider is the Psychiatry Foundation Fellowship. Now, as the name suggests, this this is specific to people who think that they might want to go on and be psychiatrists in the future. And the idea is that alongside your normal foundation training, 
you receive ongoing dedicated support from a psychiatrist to encourage you to develop yourself. So that might be things like protected time for psychiatry shadowing. It might be funding to attend conferences or do research of your own, as well as ongoing meetings with that supervisor. So you've got an extra person checking up on you and giving you mentoring. Now you're absolutely not locked in to doing psychiatry training if you don't want to. It's simply an additional pathway that exists to try and help people into this underserved specialty. So even if you're not 100% sure you want to be a psychiatrist, you could still apply for the program and try and reap all those benefits that it comes with even if you change your mind later on. You will still have benefited from that ongoing support that many other junior doctors will never have had. So that brings us to the end of this video guys. If you have any questions please be sure to leave them in the comments down below. I'll be happy to answer them as much as I can. If not I'll find the answers from somebody else because this is a really stress inducing time in your life as a medical student. There's a lot of new information that doesn't always make sense so please if I can help just drop me a comment down below. So take care guys. Be sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, subscribe and don't forget to go and check out ollieburton.com where you can find the full written article that accompanies this video and all my other videos and blogs besides. Take care and I'll see you next time.